In the middle of the windswept prairie lies an ancient structure that is older than Stonehenge and predates the known Native American civilizations in North America. It has been discovered, reused, abandoned, and rediscovered, and studied over tens of thousands of years, and still today, it's a mystery of our ancient past. The structure is known as the Majorville Medicine Wheel, and it's located in Alberta, Canada. It is one of hundreds of circle rock structures located throughout the province of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and down into the U.S. state of Montana. This medicine wheel, however, was not created by the native civilization of the Blackfoot who, today, still live in this area. There is no documentation as to who built the structure or its original purpose. The Blackfoot people regard the site as being built by someone else, or at the very least, their ancestors, who lived here before they came from the east. The Blackfoot discovered this massive site high on a prairie ridge and immediately determined it had spiritual significance. To this day, they visit and perform ceremonies, and it is considered a sacred site. After this discovery, we note that the Blackfoot created similar stone circles on a much smaller scale, replicating the design, incorporating their own cultural and spiritual essence. But this stone structure is much, much different. Not only does it predate the Blackfoot, it also offers a glimpse into an ancient culture who, by all mystery, was interested in the stars. It is the oldest known structure created by man in Canada. Professor Emeritus of the University of Alberta, Gordon R. Freeman, describes the Majorville Medicine Wheel as the most intricate stone ring that remains on the North American plains. It is not a visually impressive monument such as Stonehenge, but the significance of the site is just as profound. Interestingly, Freeman, who camped at the site for weeks on end in the 1980s and 1990s, discovered remarkable similarities to Stonehenge and other ancient sun temples. The alignment of rocks surrounding the stone markers, the spokes, although barely recognizable, there are 28 spokes or rays that fan out from the center carn. All point to a solar calendar that would most likely have been used for ceremonial purposes. Archaeologists in the 1950s determined the site to be about 5,200 years old, based on organic material beneath the rocks and dating of arrowheads and materials near the stone carn. In the early days, the carn stood about 16 feet high, with massive rock boulders making the outer circles. Remember, it was all built by hand. So how did these ancient people dig up massive boulders, transport them to the site atop the highest peak they could find, and stack them on top of one another without the use of horse, rope, pulleys, or other equipment? Today, we can see massive erosion, and the structure is just a fragment of what it was once in its prime. But the mystery of its use is still debated. What we do know is that between 3,000 and 2,000 years ago, the site was abandoned and unused. Why would such an enormous and important structure be abandoned for such a long period? Why was it used again, and to what purpose? But this is just one part of this mysterious structure. According to the professor, the hills around the site were not only used, but shaped and even constructed by man. This site is complex, with lace-like patterns of stones extending over an area of about 30 square kilometers. 5,000 years ago, two ancient cultures made precise astronomical observations at individual sites halfway around the world from one another, at nearly the same latitude, using the same techniques and counting methods. Genius existed on the North American Great Plains 5,000 years ago, and genius existed around the world. The solar calendar is so accurate at each of these ancient rock structures that it is more accurate than the calendar that we follow today. 
Why would an ancient nomadic culture need a star temple? Why was it built during a time when climate was so harsh? The structure was built during the mid Holocene and peak Hypsithermal, and in Alberta, that meant a warm, dry climate with very little rainfall. Most lakes in the grasslands and parklands were dry, and active sand dunes were present. Grass fires were in ever danger. Why was the site so massive and important? Why was it abandoned for thousands of years and then rediscovered and reused? Why does it resemble similar construction and use from places tens of thousands of miles away and even on different continents? These questions still remain, a mystery blown by the Chinook winds sweeping across the dry prairie grass to a destination unknown.